In today's show, we're told the Power Apps Dataverse Lookup column. So the idea here is we're going to create a table, and then we're going to create the lookup relationship. We're going to explain the different types of relationships, and we're all going to do it with a SharePoint slant because most of you understand SharePoint lookups. So I'm going to try to equate the two to help you guys connect some dots. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today. We're going to talk about dataverse lookup columns or relationships, right? That whole many to one, one to many, many to many. Like we're going to explain what all of those are, and then once we've kind of explained them, we're going to set the, or I guess we're going to set them up and then explain them as we're doing it. Whatever you don't care. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Power Apps, Canvas Apps, and we're going to consume those a little bit to understand like how you would use those with a form, with a patch, and a gallery, and just kind of get the advantages. And when I say we're going to add a little bit of a SharePoint slant to this. The idea is that I realize that a lot of my audience has built SharePoint lookup columns and you understand how those work and what they are. And Dataverse column lookup columns aren't that much different, right? They're Dataverse lookup columns are them, but better. So but I think by connecting a couple of dots there, you know, people I've talked to before, they have those light bulb moments. So I'm hoping to have you a couple of light bulb moments by equating the SharePoint. But who knows? Anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Over here, what I want to do, I'm going to go over here to Dataverse and then my tables. And so in a previous video, we built the employees table, right? So down here, we called it video employee. And so we went through and we built this table and it's just kind of got some basic columns, right? And remember, you can always do this little custom over here and see just the columns that we added. And so what I want to do now is I want to add another column to this list. And if you don't know about that one, I'll put the video link somewhere up there so you can go watch that because you need that to get through this one. But anyway, so we're going to do is we need to add a column here, and we're going to add a lookup column. But before we can look up the department, we need to know where that data comes from, right? So we need to create a table for that. So quickly, we're going to go over here to tables. We're going to do a new table. And then over here for display name, we're going to call this uh, video departments. And I just put in video in front of everything, so I don't forget where I did this for. And then down here, now real quick, before we go forward, one thing to understand about using relationships here, like in Power Apps, or sorry, in Power Apps, in SharePoint, we, when we do a relationship, we can define the, the column that we show in like the drop downs and things like that. In Dataverse, it is always going to show this primary name column, and you can't change the primary name column after the fact. So you want to make sure that whatever column you're using here is going to make sense when you're looking up. And so for me, I'm just going to change it from name to department name. But if you wanted this to not be, if you wanted this to be the department phone number with which you you know, wanted the relationship to show, then you'd want to make that your primary one here, right? So think about this for a second when you're building these for your real, your real uh, environments. So there's that. We're going to say create. And then now all we're going to do is we're just going to add one, maybe two columns. So we'll just add a column real quick and we'll just call this uh, department manager. Man, I can't spell. Boom, and that'll just be text. Awesome. And then we'll just add one more column for department. Yeah, we'll do phone number since I just said department phone number. All right, department phone number. That is also text in this particular scenario, right? Yeah. Now you might be saying, well, why don't you use phone? Now we haven't talked about the phone data type before. If I was building this out to be part of model-driven apps and I wanted that phone number to behave like a phone number. That would be a good choice in this scenario, but but right now we're not worried about column types, right? We're worried about relationships, so we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But that would be an adventure for another day. So we're just going to use text, okay? So there you go. We'll say done, awesome, and then we're down here in the bottom right. If I move my face over for a second, we'll say save table, and in like five seconds it came back. Okay, now that I built that, I also want to quickly populate a little bit of data, right? Having some sample data is going to make it easier for us to do this later. So what I want you to do to do that, just like in the last video, is data and then edit data in Excel. It says, hey, here's the file I just downloaded. We're going to open that file. And then after a moment, Excel pops open. You will, I have to enable editing, right? My browser protecting me from bad Excel files. So I'm saying, yes, I want this one. And then the add-in is going to load. And then you should see the blank structure. So then quickly, we'll just have an executive department. And then we'll set the department uh, manager to be Executive Ella and the department number to be, I don't know, our phone numbers, I think, this. So we'll just make that. Doesn't matter. Okay. 
And then what would you do? You'd go down here to the bottom right under my face again and say publish. And a few moments later, you start to see some of these other fields get populated. You know that it, it all worked. And if you really want to see like, see like created by lookup didn't get uh, populated, just hit refresh after you publish and then all the other fields would come pull, be pulled in. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to add like three or four departments because we just want some sample data. Right. So I'll be right back. Okay, I typed in a whole bunch of data, and so then once again under my face, we'll just press publish, and we'll get all that data in there. And then just to truly make sure it worked, you hit the refresh, and when it all shows up, right, these created bys and all these dates got populated, I know the data's there. Perfect, okay, good enough. We now have a table, I don't need to save that. So now, let's go over here to tables, and let's go back down to video departments, or no, sorry, video employees, video employees right here. And so we're gonna add a column. Now there's a few there's two different ways we can add a relationship. The first way we're going to do it is the way that I think is the most natural, right? This is the same way we do it in SharePoint. You go to add a column, and here we're going to call this um, department. Yeah, we'll just call it department. And so then for the data type for this column, if you scroll down to the bottom, there is a lookup right here, right? So you choose lookup, which is the same you do in SharePoint. And then you say, all right, for what related table? And so in this table, we should have video departments now. And that's it, right? There's not a lot of thought or process that goes into it. You just say done. And then we can say save the table under my face again. And in just a moment, we now have a blank, but department table that's ready to do these lookup or relationships. And so if you're thinking about Shane, like what the heck is a lookup or relationship, right? It's, it's exactly this. So the idea is that we have employees, right? We have all these people on this list. And now we want to have another table, another list of data, and we want to reference values over there. So in our case, we're going to pull departments. So instead of when we add um, Chewy as an employee here, having to type in a bunch of stuff about the department that is repetitive all the time and having that all tied into this one record for Chewy, instead we just say, hey, we're adding a new employee Chewy, and we want to connect to the other list department and we want to pull in the executive department. And so then all the data about the executive department is maintained in the executive list, but we just have the relationship. We just know to go over there to get the data. But if we go over here and change the executive manager from being Nicola to being Jennifer, then the list over here gets updated. And the next time you view Chewy and you drill into his department, you'll just see executive and Jennifer in that case, right? Like the, the data is connected by the IDs between the two so you don't have to store all the data in one big giant table, right? So that's the idea of a relationship, is you want to have related tables. You want some data in this one, some reference data over in this one, and you want a way to connect those. Okay? And so to that end, that relationships, you know, if we look over here in Dataverse, we're going to see that, you know, we had columns right here, but side columns is relationships. And so this is where Dataverse shows us all of the relationship columns that are available, right? And so you can see if we look down here, look, there's department. So by adding a lookup, it added relationship. And if we kind of scroll over here, we can see it gave it a name. We don't really care about the name. It knows what table it related it to, video departments. And it knows the relationship type, right? And so in this case, that is many to one. So this is where it gets a little scary, right? Like this is where my SharePoint people check out because they've never had to think about many to one. What does many to one mean? All that means is that many different employees, right? So whether it's Chewy or Juan or Greg or Steven, it doesn't matter. Different employees, many employees, and they all are connecting their data to one um, department, right? So Chewy is connected to one department. Juan is connected to one department. Sarah is connected to one department. So many over here connected to one over there because the idea is that both Sarah and um, Aubrey are both executives, so both of them are connecting to the one executive over here, right? The one executive department. So many people connecting, but you're only making one connection, right? Juan can't be in both accounting and IT. He's either in accounting or he's in IT. He's, he's related to one department or the other, not multiple. But 10 people in our company could all be in the IT department. So that's the many to one, right? Sounds super scary. The important thing to know is that by creating that lookup column, you created a many to one. So that, what does that tell you? For years now in SharePoint, 
When you went into SharePoint and said add a column and added a lookup column in SharePoint, you've been creating a many to one relationship. SharePoint was just gentler, right? SharePoint didn't tell you that nerdy detail because it was afraid of scaring you. But I can tell you from the people I've talked to, it was scary words. So that's why we want to break down that many to one. You'll also sometimes see that written as like n to one or n colon one, many to one. And if you go up here to add a relationship and you hit a little drop down, you're going to see you can add many to one, which is what we just did, but we used the lookup column. You could also add a one to many. So if we'd been over in departments and wanted to make a connection or set up this relationship while we're in departments, we would have said, hey, departments, we want to have a one to many for employees. I'll be honest, like no one I know's brain thinks that way. And I'm sure one of you are saying I do, but for most people we go to the parent, as I think of this, right? The employee table where we're having the many down to the one department. So, but one to many is the opposite, right? When we created the many to one, remember the many to one was from employees to department, that was automatically defined. But if you, but if we go look now, let's just go look real quick. If we go to tables and we go back to video in, uh, departments now, if you look at relationships, what you're gonna see over here is look, department is listed here. And in this case, the relationship is one to many because it knows that it is a relationship back to empo video employee, right? So you don't actually care, but I just want you to see that we created it from the many to one perspective because that's the way it works or the way that all of our brains work and the lookup column automatically did it. But under the hood, Dataverse knows that when we go to departments that it has a one, right? to many relationship backwards. So not super important, but I wanted you guys to see that this is here. Also keep in mind if you create this and you come over here and refresh, it doesn't show up. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for this um, relationship to show up, but you don't really care that it's here, but I'm just trying to be complete with you guys as, as you see these pieces. Um, another thing that I think is worth noting is as we think about the data. So when we go over to Power Apps in a few minutes, I'll probably say this again over there anyway, but when we go to Power Apps and we start manipulating this, when you add a record, right? So we go and edit Juan and we put him in the accounting department, we are going to change Juan's record. We're gonna update Juan's record and, and, and create that link, that reference to the accounting department. But if we go to the accounting side and looked at that record, that record doesn't get changed. Accounting doesn't technically know that Juan is linked to it, right? So many the many side of the relationship gets changed the one side does not so it's a small nuance once again you probably don't care but i want you to kind of think about that if you're really trying to understand this stuff at a deeper level all right let's go back to relationships so that is many to one and one to many now there's also down here uh, at the bottom many to many I'm not gonna lie that one is a little more scary so the idea there is if we want to create a late relationship where, so instead of saying departments, what if we had a table called sports and we want to be able to go to an employee and choose the different sports that they love. They want to be able to choose multiple. So it was a many to many, right? So we're going to go into one or to, let's see, we'll go to me. And so I love soccer, right? So I'd find soccer. And then I also want, I also love basketball and I love volleyball and I love, man, whatever. I like sports. But so I can select those many over here, right? So the idea is that me, one person, can like multiple sports, but they're related. And so what happens in a many to many is that there becomes this magical hidden middle table that defines all of those relationships as, but it maintains them as many to ones, but both sides all the way through. The reason I bring that up is because I don't want to talk about many to many any more than that today. I'm going to make a separate video because working with many to many relationships, it is more complex. It is harder. There is new concepts you have to understand. But the good news is, is that like, I can't think of a single one of my customers where we have a many to many relationship that I've like had to do, right? I, I, I'm sure somewhere if we tried hard enough, we have, but, but many to many relationships aren't very common. Typically we end up with many to ones and we end up, you know, designing the data model to account for that. If they want to have those relationships, we, we design the data model a little bit differently to account for that, avoiding many to many's. But anyway, we'll do a separate video at some point on many to many's right now. We're really just concentrating on many to ones. Okay. So there you go. 
So now that we've done this, we've got a relationship. Let's go over to Power Apps and talk about how to connect the dots, right? So how to relate data and then uh, how to view that back in a gallery. So what we'll do is we'll just go over here to create. I was like trying to decide how I'm gonna do this. We'll do a blank app. We'll do a blank canvas app, obviously. And then we'll call this uh, relationships. I might even spell it right in Dataverse. And I'm just gonna do a simple tablet and say create. Okay, so now that that's in here, First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in a gallery, right? So we'll insert, we'll click on galleries. I don't know why my galleries hide over here, but they do. And then if we just search right here, we should be able to say, uh, we'll just do video. And then there's video. And then for here, we're going to do employees, right? Cause we wanna pull in, employees is that parent data. So we pull in video employees. And then we'll just kind of change this to be title and subtitle. And we'll say, hey, show us the, uh, not the created date. We'll just do their depart. Oh, no, we're not gonna do department yet. Um, we'll do their last name, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, so there's our list. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about is like the easiest way to maintain or, or work with these relationships, right? Because we want to relate Greg into one of the, the departments. So if you are still using forms, well, I know I'm not a huge fan, but that's okay. If you're using forms, you can just do an edit form on here. We'll go right here. We'll make it bigger because I like it to be bigger. We'll say data source is video employees. And then it throws a couple of columns in there and then we'll say edit fields and we'll just say get rid of created because we don't need that one. So remove and we'll add a field. And all we're going to add is their first name, their last name and their department. Say add, and then close that, or yeah, close that, and we'll set this thing just to be one, make it bigger. Okay, so just like that, now if we um, put this form into, or so we'll change the item property here, and then we'll set the uh, item to be gallery one dot selected. Boom, we see Greg's data. And so if we go in here and we hit the drop down there are the departments that we created, right? We, we didn't have to do anything. So we're gonna put Greg into HR. And then if we wanna save that data, right? What do we do? We just go up here, we create a button, and then we say on this submit form, and then form one. And if we hit play, and then we say do, 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 do. we'll say this to save it. Greg should now be updated. And if we get rid of his last name over here and say this item dot department, we're gonna to get to see one of the interesting pieces of this. So look, when you do this item dot department, that's your lookup column, it comes back, it's telling me it's a record. What do we do when we have a record? We use our shovel, right? AKA the dot or the, the period, you do a dot. And then look, it pulls in all the fields for us. So we've got department manager, department name, department phone number, and then all the other backend fields. But if we do department manager, we should see HR Henry because that's the department manager. This is one of the greatest features of Dataverse for me, right? Is when you do these relationships, you can use this dot notation to dig down into the relationship and pull in all the fields, right? Whereas over in SharePoint, what we'd had to have done, we would have had to add those as columns and they would have shown up as department colon department manager, right? Like they would have been this weird interface and then you have delegation challenges and a bunch of goofiness. So we don't have to do that. We don't have to use a lookup function. With Power, uh, with Dataverse, we are just connected in here. You know, and so then now like if we go to me and then we add me to the executive department, save it, boom, there's executive Ella. And then if we go down here to Jeff, right, same thing. Jeff can be an IT, save it. And we got IT Irma. So, just like that, right? If you're just using forms, super simple. And what's really happening here, if you click on the drop down, they're just using the choices function. And so the choices function knows that department is a uh, lookup column. And so then it is pulling in the values from that other table, right? So that's how that is working. Now, if we kind of take this thing, shrink it up a little bit. So that's if you just want to use forms. I don't love forms, but we, we like, we want to make sure to talk about, right? So to say submit form here. 
So what if you want to do the same thing with patch? Okay, fair enough. So for patch, the way that this works is what you're going to do is you're going to say patch, not past, patch. What do I want to patch? I want to patch video uh, employees. We're just going to create a new one, so we'll do defaults uh, employees. And so then we know that uh, first name is required. So first name, we're going to set this to uh, Patty Pat or Patty since we're doing the patch. And then the only other column we're going to put in here is department. So for department in the case of using a patch, what it is expecting is it wants you to pass it the record of the data that you're looking for, right? So one of the easiest ways to do this is we could do a uh, input and we could do a drop down. And so then in this drop down, we would say, hey, you, I want to use um, video departments. Now, so I need to add that as a data source. Wait a minute. So another interesting thing about lookup columns, right? Remember, we added video um, employees as a data source, right? We did that. Power Apps was smart enough that when we referenced the departments, we did the lookup uh, reference, it had to go fetch that data. So we added departments as a data source automatically for us. We didn't have to do that. It just put it here. Huh, pretty cool. So for the items here, what do we want? We want video departments. So the video departments, remember that's the list, right? So that's all the different people. And I can change, maybe instead of showing department manager, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Maybe instead of showing department manager, we wanted to show department name or department phone number because that's what you want them to look it up by. Whatever you're looking to hunt that down via, which would do department name, that is what you'd put in the drop down here. And so with patch, all we have to do now is say, uh, I'm sure it's drop down one dot selected. And that's, you're going to stop right there. You're not going to do selected dot a field name, right? because department wants the record, right? It wants to know what record that you're tying this to, so you're gonna to wanna to provide it that, that whole record. But if we do this, this should create a new one called Patty, and Patty would be an executive. So let's press the button and see what happens. Roop. Go to scroll to the bottom, Patty and executive Ella. What, 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 what? Kinda of cool, right? Like, that's pretty straightforward in my book. But with patch, that is the key. Now, what if, in, what if I wanted to hard code it to the executive department, right? What would I do in that particular case? So the key is that this has to be a record. So what I typically would do is some type of lookup, right? So I would say lookup from video departments and then a condition that would always be true, right? So we're going to cheat right now and just use, um, what do we call this field? Department name. So we'd say department name, do, do. department name equals executive. And so as long as that lookup returns the record that you want, which in this case, if we hover, right, it says a record and you can see the record. Well, it's not gonna show it to us, but that would do, that would set them to hard code to be your executive, right? Let's just test it. So we'll just do patty two. And now we'll say play, press the button. And if we scroll down here, well, did I not change your name to Patty too? I thought I did. Oh, you know what I'm doing? I know what I'm doing, I'm guessing. Let's just go up here. No, that should be long enough. All right, let's try again. First name is Patty two without the space. Maybe the space is confusing, or not confusing it, but is just not showing up. Press the button. There you go. I don't know. We want to we we'll ignore why the other one didn't show up in the space. But there you go. So Patty two and Executive L, right? So the idea here is that you would do a lookup. Now, you might say department name might not always be unique. That is fair. Then remember what is the primary key in in these data sets, right? So make.powerapps.com. So if we go to Dataverse and then we go to our tables. So then we go to departments and go to data. And so if we say, show me all columns, 
there is this video department, right? There is the, that is the primary key, right? So you could copy that. I always do a different department, let's do it IT. So we'll copy this one. So it starts with C, ends in a nine. I always do that to make sure I get it right. And so then you would go here and you would change this to put in that. And then you would say, um, instead of department name, you would say video departments like that. And so I think it's mad. So it's telling me that I'm comparing um, a GUID to text, which is annoying. It used to not have this problem. So you put the GUID function around that like so. And so now if we press the button, Patty three should be an IT, right? So press this, do this. Patty three is IT Irma. So that's how you, different ways that you could patch these connections if you want to, you know, be more rigorous in your controls. Now there is a third way that you can do, uh, establish these relationships. And so that is called relate. And so the idea of relate is it's a function that would build this relationship for you. So it doesn't create the record. It's not gonna create the, uh, the new record like Patch did. It's not gonna create the, or do anything like Forms did. All it does is build, does the relationship side. So there's a function called relate, another one called unrelate. Um, honestly, on many to ones or one to minis, we don't ever use those functions. So we're not gonna talk about those in this one. But when we go to many to many, in the next time we can talk about this stuff, with many to many, you have to use relate and unrelate. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to them, but we don't have to do that today. All right, so then the last piece of this, um, I just wanna talk about one more second and then we'll be done, is so now that we've built this, what if I want to filter this data, right? So I only wanna see the, ex uh, the executives. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna go here, you're gonna say filter employees, and you're gonna say where department dot and then in our case, department name equals executive, like so. And then now we just see the four people that are executives. Yay! So nothing complex about that. But that's important to note because remember I told you like executive, the executive record in department has not been being changed as we've been using it, right? The executive department doesn't know what employees are related to it. So you're like, oh, I can't do it. But so, but by filtering the data, you can figure out who all of the executives are. But if we were to look at our employees, right, they do know all of this. So like if we go back over here to uh, video employees, and remember I told you guys like one of the things I really do a lot is I use edit data in Excel to understand. So we won't want to open video employees this time. And the reason we're going to open up video employees, if I can click on the file, is I wanted you to see over here that, you know, so we have the department, it is a lookup, so executive, right? And so it gives you the little picker. But if you're ever trying to manipulate these, you can't just, I can't go here to Juan and say, Juan, you're in IT, right? I can't just go here and type in Juan IT and be, if I hit publish, so I should publish, and then let's just hit refresh. And look, Juan's IT got wiped out because you can't put in text for here. But if you need to manipulate these, these is like one of my super pro tips. If you scroll all the way to the right, you're going to see video, um, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. It's right here. So look, these are those, IT, uh, uh, those, those uh, IDs. So if I go right here and copy this, so the GUID for whatever department this is, and paste it in here for one, Let's see, for, that's for five. Um, so Jeff, so it'll be IT, right? So Juan is currently nothing. Now if we hit publish, now it says Juan is IT. So if you ever need to manipulate these relationships on the Excel side, change the GUID column, not the text column. Bingo, bingo, you've got what you want. Okay. Seriously, people, that is like everything I think I can think of, right? This video got longer than I wanted. I apologize, but, but hopefully this is the good stuff, right? You should not be afraid of lookup columns, right? Many to one, one to many, you understand it. It's the same thing, just from two different directions. We're going to come back to many to many, I promise, at some point. But many to one is the same thing as your SharePoint. So all those things, all those lookup relationships you've been doing in SharePoint, those have been many to ones. You just didn't know it. So awesome. So if you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. You know, always happy to help you with this type of stuff, right? 
answering your questions or, you know, Power Apps 911, we have full on consulting services where we've done this for hundreds or thousands or millions or zillions or quadrillions of people because we get a lot of these uh, type of calls. So, yeah. So anyway, I think that's what I've got for today. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.